The star, on the surface, it would appear that a vegetarian diet can lead to a longer life and a reduced incidence of certain diseases at least, it seems that plant fiber plays a significant part in promoting a smoothly functioning intestinal system which is critical for good health. However, the definition of vegetarian used is as per most scientific dietary studies it includes the occasional consumption of animal and slash or fish proteins. The total exclusion of meat from the diet can be regarded as mildly nutrition deficient but it is also generally not life-threatening. The main risk of excluding meat is a lower intake of certain compounds found in meat including vitamin B12, cobalamin, creatine, carnosine, vitamin D3, colocalciferol, certain omega-3 fatty acids, e.g. docosahexaionic acid, or DHA, chemiron, taurine, etc. It is feasible to replace or augment some of these nutrients from plant-based foods, for example, Vitamin B12 is also present in seaweed and fermented soybeans, and DHA can be synthesized by the body from alpha-linolenic acid, ALA, found in some seeds. But some meat nutrients are not present in any plants, they include creatine, carnosine, chemiron, taurine, etc., which are compounds that can affect health, stamina, and general well-being in subtle ways. Despite the meat industry's constant insinuations about how much everyone needs animal protein, the fact is that growing children require rather more meat protein than adults. Severe protein deficiency is manifested by diseases such as marasmus and quashiorchor, normally found only in countries prone to famines, and these diseases tend to affect children rather more than adults. The truth is that most broiler chickens in the UK never see a blade of grass in all their sad, Appalling lives and great efforts are made by the industry to prevent people from knowing such facts. In modern societies, practically any ordinary adult diet, vegetarian or meat-based, will normally include adequate protein. As such, protein deficiency diseases are really rare even if meat is wholly excluded from the diet and protein deficiency in civilized countries is usually linked to eating disorders rather than food itself. Anyway, there are now very good reasons to consider eating more vegetables and less meat in fact, perhaps restricting meat to only a few portions a week. These reasons are not necessarily wholly to do with nutritional considerations but also relate to evolutionary, environmental, ecological and perhaps humane reasons. A question posed earlier is whether modern humans are eating too much meat. The answer, emphatically, is yes. By comparison, the consumption of meat by our Paleolithic ancestors would have been highly irregular and probably restricted to smaller quantities. There were several reasons for this, it is not usual to hunt and kill large animals every day, so meat would be generally be sourced from small animals and birds which needed to be shared between many people. Hunting was not always successful every day either. There was no refrigeration so meat would spoil quickly.